For 45 years, HIV has remained unfindable and incurable. HIV is a unique type of virus known as a retrovirus, meaning it uses a special enzyme called reverse transcriptase to convert RNA into DNA and transfer its own genetic code into a host's genome. Therefore, HIV can hide dormant within your own cells for years without producing a protein marker that your body can detect, making the virus extremely hard to eliminate from the body. That was until now. Scientists have just discovered a way to use mRNA lipid nanoparticle, or LNP, technology. The same strategy Pfizer and Moderna used to create a COVID-19 vaccine to find where HIV is hiding and provoke an immune response. Previously, the best HIV therapy was antiretroviral, or ART, therapy, which works by using a variety of drugs to target different key aspects of the HIV life cycle. However, while lifelong ART treatments stop HIV from killing people, it is not a cure. Instead, it just keeps the level of HIV in the body undetectable. The real bottleneck, the reason we still can't cure HIV, is that the virus can hide inside resting CD4 plus T cells, a type of immune cell. In this latent state, HIV becomes invisible to both the immune system and to art. So, the challenge isn't just suppressing HIV. We've already figured that out. The real challenge is finding where HIV hides. We need something that can activate latent CD4 plus T cells and create an immune response while not harming the immune system in the process and not activating other pathways in your body as a byproduct. The rest of this video will cover exactly how a recent Nature publication from the Peter Doherty Institute in Melbourne did just this. The first problem the researchers had to solve was how do you even get into a latent T cell? These cells are extremely difficult to get into because they have fewer surface receptors and do less endocytosis than an active cell. To solve this, the researchers built a new and improved LNP called LNPX. LNPs are made from a few key components, and the team carefully chose parts that earlier studies had shown could help get into resting T cells. First, they replaced the original lipid component, the part of the LNP that acts as a shell, with the same one used in Moderna's COVID vaccine, a version known to help mRNA escape the endosome and reach the cytoplasm, where it can actually be used to make protein. Second, they swapped out the original sterile, the part that keeps the LNP stable and together, for a plant-based version of cholesterol called b cytosterol which had been shown to enhance mRNA delivery. These changes worked incredibly well. The LNP's ability to enter cells, also called transfection rate, jumped from just 2% to over 50%, and it did all of this without causing harmful side effects or triggering unwanted immune activation. With the way to enter latent T cells officially in hand, the next step was figuring out why LNP worked so well. To do this, the researchers used a tool called Snap Switch, which allowed them to test three things. First, how well LNPX sticks to T cells. Second, how well LNPX is getting mRNA out of the endosomes and into the cytoplasm. And finally, how efficiently LNPX turns that mRNA into protein. The results were fascinating. LNPX was 2.5 times better at sticking to latent T cells compared to the next best option. It also produced 5.3 times more protein for every unit of mRNA that made it into the cytoplasm. Altogether, this led to a massive 10.5 fold increase in total protein expression. But surprisingly, there was no difference in how well LNPX escaped the endosome. That might actually be a good thing though. Better endosomal escape often means punching holes into the endosome, which can damage the cell and trigger immune alarms. So the fact that LNPX boosts protein production by an order of magnitude without tearing up endosomes could make it both safer and more likely to succeed in clinical trials. 
With an understanding of how LNPX enters latent T cells and transmits mRNA, it was now time for researchers to face the big question. Would LNPX be capable of activating latent T cells and effectively exposing them to the immune system? To test this, the researchers delivered mRNA encoding in HIV TAT protein that activates the virus and makes it visible to the immune system. They did this ex vivo, which means they used tissue from people currently undergoing art treatment for HIV. The results, once again, were amazing. TAT LNPX was able to wake up the latent HIV, while the proteinless control had no impact. Additionally, they found that all stages of HIV RNA transcription, including initiation, elongation, and splicing, increased significantly. Transcription is how HIV turns its DNA into RNA, and eventually protein, so this finding was crucial. When all was said and done, the LNPX TAT treatment was stronger than the next best competitor, and caused 17.2 times more HIV RNA to be present in the cell's cytoplasm. Additionally, the treatment was very specific to latent HIV T cells, meaning there weren't many side effects. And finally, to end their experimentation, the researchers tried to activate the latent T cells in a different way, this time using LNPX to transport CRISPR machinery instead of TAT protein mRNA. And for yet another time, the results were astonishing. LNPX was able to bring CRISPR into the cell. Furthermore, the CRISPR was able to activate HIV without causing general T-cell activation. This CRISPR research proved that LNPX was versatile and usable in many ways, as it didn't just work for mRNA. Overall, this research clearly demonstrated a way to find HIV. However, while this discovery is both cool and impactful, it's important to discuss the limitations and future directions of research needed to turn this scientific article into a cure for HIV. Regarding limitations, most critically, it's important to note that this research is only the shock part of the shock and kill method that scientists want to use to eliminate HIV. While LNPX treatment was able to shock HIV more than ever before, it was not able to perform the kill aspect. After five days of ex vivo treatment, there was no HIV DNA reduction, no HIV-induced cell death, and no immune clearance. This is a significant limitation of the study. However, the research done here introduces many promising pathways for future research to travel down. For example, researchers could study different combination therapies, where LNPX activation works with other killing mechanisms to supplement immune responses and eliminate HIV. Additionally, I think it would be very cool to study different uses for CRISPR with LNPX. Instead of just using CRISPR to activate latent T cells, what if CRISPR could work to block HIV from entering cells in the first place, or specifically remove the HIV DNA segments within the cell? It will be very interesting to see this work evolve in the coming months and years. And there you have it, a deep review of one of the most impactful scientific discoveries of 2025. Don't forget to subscribe and have a nice day.